Hey guys, it's Flow Graphics here, and I thought I'd make this uh, sort of Cinema 4D series uh, where I go through the very basics um, into the more advanced um, sort of techniques and tools and all that in Cinema 4D. Um, so I might do like an episode a week or something. Uh, depends on the feedback I get from this first episode. If you guys like it, I'll do more. If you don't, I might just do it once a week or something like that. So. Uh, today I'm going to be going through all of sort of the essentials, all of the main settings I use, and all the things that you you really need to know. Um, I'll show you how to set up a simple Lightroom around your text, and how to just get a really nice looking render going. Um, so let's just get into it. So first thing I go is my render settings, and if I'm making this for a YouTube ba banner, I'll go 2120 for the width, and the height I'll do 349. Uh, that's the ratio for the YouTube banner. It goes right across the whole banner. So if you're making something, you can see how it fits inside the banner. And it's um, yeah, it's just pretty nifty. Uh, but if I'm making this for a wallpaper or HD video, I'll do 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. And always remember to uh, set your resolution to 300. It really does make a difference going from 72 to 300. So always remember to bump up the resolution. And I just go to Effect, Ambient Occlusion. I always add that. It just makes the shadows and the shading better. Um, and it really does make a difference. So that's all for that for now. Um, now I'm just going to drag in some simple mo text. Just change the name to Flow. I don't, I don't want to do anything too um, detailed or anything. I just want some really simple text that will just look nice and clean. It's going to add a little fillet cap. I might add the depth a little bit more. So that looks fine. I like to add fillet caps to everything. It's just the way I do. Um, if I'm modeling, I usually find if things are sharp corners, they don't look as realistic. If you just add a little fillet cap, it just makes it look a bit smoother, a bit nicer. So I'm just going to add a camera too, so we can always come back to this position if we want to move around the scene. Um, and I'm going to create uh, two materials now. So I'll just load two materials, and then I'll double click on one. It's going to uncheck everything for now, and then check on luminance. And I'm just going to turn up that brightness to 120%. And um, that's good for that. And then I'm going to go into my other material. I'm going to uncheck specular. My color, I just want like a light gray. Uh, white is usually too bright. So um, the default color that turns on should be fine. I'm just going to go to reflection. Just tick that on. Turn down the brightness to like 25-30%. And then the blurriness to around 5-10%. Whatever you think looks best. And then I'll just pop that on the text. Um, just like a really quick sort of reflective material. And then I'm going to start making our Lightroom. So the first thing you want to do is want to click on the light bulb here and hold down the click and then go to Area Light. And you'll get sort of this blank box here, but as you can see when you move it around, um, it affects the lighting of the text. So what I'm going to do is just go to Coordinates and the second one down, I'm just going to type in 90. which will just rotate it 90 degrees onto its side. And then I might just adjust uh, the size of it a little bit, just so it looks a bit like like a ceiling light would look like. And then I'm going to go uh, to plane in my polygon selection, and it's going to drag that up. And then I'm going to click on the little uh, square top right hand corner, which opens my views. And then I'm going to click on the top right hand one. And I'm just going to adjust the size of the plane to be the same size as the light. So it doesn't really have to be perfect. Um, it, it doesn't matter. As long as it's around the same size, it's fine. So that should be fine. And then just go into your uh, frontal view and just make sure the two planes are aligned. So that looks good. And I'm just going to select both of them. I'm pressing Alt G, or just puts those items into a group. I'm just going to name it Light. And then now we have our light. I'm just going to position it above the text, sort of centered here, and then center it again. Put it up a bit. And then this is basically how we make our Lightroom. So I could copy and paste this again, and then rotate it on its side. And then we'll get another light on that side. And I could do the same thing for this side. Make sure you select, if you're copy and pasting the light, 
make sure you select the group over here if you just click on it you could just select the plane and then you won't you won't actually get the the light shining through let's copy and paste that again and just rotate it so it's facing the front and then if I scroll back to my camera as you can see now all that text is lit up from all the directions is very white and bright and um, we have sort of like a really basic light room and you could tweak this you could change the lights you could add separate lights um, on their own for little um, points where you think might be dark there's a lot of things you can do but for now this should be good um, and I'll just drag down these lights a little bit so the lights are a bit bright so I'm just going to turn down the brightness of them um, so it would probably be easier if you did that at the start but <laughs> I'll just I'll just do it now quickly so I'll just put down the intensity to 50% on all of the lights make sure you do that to the light and not the material for the plane because that won't do anything if you do it for the material on the plane so I'm just going to here turn all down to 50% so you can see if I go back to my camera angle render that out real quick it's still there it's just a bit grey out um, not as bright which is what we want because whenever I'm doing lighting for a scene I don't just do a light room there's always one thing I always add and a lot of people don't even um, realize or don't even think about doing this is you got to create physical sky and physical sky and it adds a realistic sky environment to your scene it really looks good really makes awesome shadows and um, really enhances your scene so if you click on your sky and then in the basic options you see load sky preset it depends what uh, version of Cinema 4D you have. Some versions are sort of the basic versions, they don't have these pre-built in packages, but um, I found if I've downloaded the extra things, if you go to, I think, help, check for updates and you update it, um, that helped and I got them. Um, but you can see there's plenty of presets here which look um, really good. I often use this sort of sunset one because if you, if you get a nice angle on it, um, you get the really nice yellow sunset sort of uh, reflection on one side and then the darker blue on the other side and if you don't want to see your sky in the background you can always go right click Cinema 4D tags compositing and then just turn off uh, scene by camera so the sky will affect your scene but you just don't see the actual sky in the background and as you can see from that text there um, with the sky and then turning off the sky and rendering it it makes a huge difference it brightens it all up um, it adds a lot of color but if I was to turn off um, my lights real quick, uh, turn them off, and then render it out, it's too dark and it doesn't look as good. So that's what I was saying before is I like to use both of them because um, the sky and the lights work really well together and it creates a really nice scene. So if I now have this text, it looks uh, really nice, I've got a cool light room, whatever, and I want to render it out. The red and settings I use, if I just click on the red and settings here, make sure my ambient occlusion is on. I do not use global illumination. Um, plenty of people use it. I just, I never need to use it because I usually have all my lighting to exactly how I want it and I don't need it. Um, so one thing you can do, you can go to save and you can choose your file. I just save it afterwards. But if this is for a background or you want to put this text into a different scene or something, turn on alpha channel and it will, um, it will make it so it's a PNG um, and then the background will just be transparent um, and then another thing you can do is go to anti-aliasing um, and then go to geometry or sorry best from geometry and then turn the minimum level to two times two uh, when, what uh, this is is when you render it out you might see you have very sharp um, lines on the end of the ed edges of the text um, so these pixelated sharp lines and what anti-aliasing or aliasing, I don't know how you want to pronounce it but it just smooths out the edges and it just makes it look um, a bit nicer, not so pixelated so if I was to render this out right now um, it's a pretty simple scene so it shouldn't take that long to render out but I'll just, I'll just skip the render anyway and now that text is rendered out I can just go to file, save as and then make sure you save it as a PNG and turn it to 16 bits um, for depth it just improves the quality a little bit and then just press OK and then choose where you want to save it save it to my desktop save whoops, I don't know what happened 
Okay. Low. Okay. And then, as you can see, it says there's a PNG, so it has no background, and you can easily just put that into whatever scene you want. And, um, yeah, so that's the very basics on Cinema 40, basically. Uh, next week, or next episode, wherever, um, I'll probably do a brief, I don't know, maybe some texturing, um, whatever, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> but... It will be getting more advanced as I go, just for the people that don't know a lot about Sinal 40, I thought I'd start it from the very basics, just so um, they can learn as well. Uh, but there will be a lot more advanced modelling and texturing and lighting tutorials um, as I get further into it. So, I hope you enjoy, make sure to leave a comment and a like if you enjoy this series, and if you want to see more of it, make sure to tell me because um, I will happily make whatever the new viewers uh, like to watch. So. Yeah, thanks for watching guys and you yeah, have a nice day. Stars made